The Mishnah Torah (Hebrew: Torah) repetition of the Torah, subtitled Sefer Yad HaHazaka (Spur It, Book of the Strong Hand), is a code of Jewish religious law (Halakha) authored by Maimonides, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, also known as Rambam or Rambam. The Mishnah Torah was compiled between 1170 and 1180 while Maimonides was living in Egypt, and is regarded as Maimonides' magnum opus. Accordingly, later sources simply refer to the work as Maimon, Maimonides, or Rambam, although Maimonides composed other works. Mishnah Torah consists of 14 books, subdivided into sections, chapters, and paragraphs. It is the only medieval era work that details all of Jewish observance, including those laws that are only applicable when the Holy Temple is in existence, and remains an important work in Judaism. Its title is an appellation originally used for the Biblical Book of Deuteronomy, and its subtitle, Book of the Strong Hand, derives from its subdivision into 14 books, the numerical value 14, when represented as the Hebrew letters Yod 10 to let 4, forms the word Yod hand. Maimonides intended to provide a complete statement of the oral law, so that a person who mastered first the written Torah and then the Mishnah Torah would be in no need of any other book. Contemporary reaction was mixed, with strong and immediate opposition focusing on the absence of sources and the belief that the work appeared to be intended to supersede study of the Talmud. Maimonides responded to these criticisms, and the Mishnah Torah endures as an influential work in Jewish religious thought. According to several authorities, a decision may not be rendered in opposition to a view of Maimonides, even where he apparently militated against the sense of a Talmudic passage, for in such cases the presumption was that the words of the Talmud were incorrectly interpreted. Likewise, one must follow Maimonides, even when the latter opposed his teachers, since he surely knew their views, and if he decided against them, he must have disapproved their interpretation. Topic. Origin, sources, and language Topic. Maimonides sought brevity and clarity in his Mishnah Torah and, as in his commentary on the Mishnah, he refrained from detailing his sources, considering it sufficient to name his sources in the preface. He drew upon the Torah and the rest of Tanakh, both Talmuds, Tosefta, and the Halashik Midrashim, principally Sifra and Cipher. Some believe that he preferred rulings in certain Midrash collections to rulings in the Talmud, which would have been a rare opinion at the time. Later sources include the responsa of the Geonim. The maxims and decisions of the Geonim are frequently presented with the introductory phrase, the Geonim have decided, or there is a regulation of the Geonim, while the opinions of Isaac Alphasi and Alphasi. S. pupil Joseph ibn Migosh are prefaced by the words my teachers have decided although there is no direct source confirming ibn Migosh as Maimonides' teacher. According to Maimonides, the Geonim were considered unintelligible in our days, and there are but few who are able to comprehend them. There were even times when Maimonides disagreed with what was being taught in the name of the Geonim. A number of laws appear to have no source in any of the works mentioned. It is thought that Maimonides deduced them through independent interpretations of the Bible or that they are based on versions of previous Talmudic texts no longer in our hands. Maimonides himself states a few times in his work that he possessed what he considered to be more accurate texts of the Talmud than what most people possessed at his time. The latter has been confirmed to a certain extent by versions of the Talmud preserved by the Yemenite Jews as to the reason for what previously were thought to be rulings without any source. Topic. Language and style Topic. The Mishnah Torah is written in Hebrew in the style of the Mishnah. As he states in the preface, Maimonides was reluctant to write in Talmudic Aramaic, since it was not widely known. His previous works had been written in Arabic. The Mishnah Torah never cites sources or arguments, and confines itself to stating the final decision on the law to be followed in each situation. There is no discussion of Talmudic interpretation or methodology, and the sequence of chapters follows the factual subject matter of the laws rather than the intellectual principle involved. Topic. The books and sections Topic. 1. Hamada knowledge. 1. Yesaday Ha Torah, belief in God, and other Jewish principles of faith. 2. 
De O, general proper behavior 3. Talmud Torah, Torah study 4. Avoda Zara, the prohibition against idolatry and foreign worship 5. Teshiva, the law and philosophy of repentance 2. Ahava love of God 1. Kriyat Shema, recitation of the Shema 2. Tefila and Berkat Kohanim, prayer and the priestly blessing 3. Tefillin, Mezuzah, and Sefer Torah 4. Zitzit 5. Barakat, blessings 6. Mila, circumcision 7. Seder Tefilo, order of prayers 3. Zamanim, times 1. Shabbat, Sabbath 2. Aruvan, a rabbinic device that facilitates Sabbath observance 3. Shevetat backquote asor, laws of Yom Kippur, except for the temple service see avodat Yom Ha Kippurim, below 4. Yom Tov, prohibitions on major Jewish holidays that are different from the prohibitions of Sabbath 5. Hametz u Matzah, Hametz and Matzah i.e., Passover 6. Shofar ve lulav ve sukkah, shofar i.e., Rosh Hashanah and palm frond and sukkah i.e., Sukkot 7. Shekelim, money collected for the temple in Jerusalem when it stood 8. Kiddush Hachadesh, sanctification of the month 9. Tano, fasts 10. Hanukkah u Megillah, Hanukkah and the scroll of Esther i.e., Purim 4. Nashim, women 1. Ishit, laws of marriage, including Kiddushin and the Ketubah 2. Gerishin, laws of divorce 3. Yibam va Chalitza, laws of leveret marriage 4. Naira Batula, the law of a man who seduces or rapes an unmarried woman 5. Soda, laws concerning a woman suspected of infidelity 5. Kadusha, holiness 1. Ishare Bia, forbidden sexual relations, including nidda, incest, and adultery. Since intermarriage with non Jews is forbidden, the laws of conversion to Judaism are also included. 2. Makalat Ashuro, laws of forbidden foods. See Kashra. 3. Shachita, laws of ritual slaughter. 6. Hafla, separation. 1. Shevuo, laws of oaths to refrain from doing an action. 2. Nedarim, laws of vows to do an action. 3. Nezero, laws of Nazarites. 4. Erechin, laws of donations to the temple. 7. Zeraim, seeds. 1. Kalayim, laws of forbidden mixtures. 2. Anayim, laws of obligatory gifts to the poor. 3. Terumo, laws of obligatory gifts to the priests. 4. Maser, laws of tithes. 5. Shani, laws of secondary tithes. 6. Bikaram, laws of first fruit offerings. 7. Shemitah, laws of the sabbatical year. 8. Avoda, divine service. 1. Bet Habachira, laws of God's chosen house. 2. Clay Hamakdish, laws of the temple utensils and those who serve within. 3. Bayat Hamakdish, laws of entry to the sanctuary. 4. Ishare Hamazbiyash, laws of entities prohibited to be offered on the altar. 5. Masa Hakorbanot, laws of the sacrificial procedures. 6. Temidim Yumusafim, laws of continual and additional offerings. 7. Pesul Hamukdashim, laws of consecrated entities that have been disqualified. 8. Avodat Yom Hakapuram, laws of the Yom Kippur service. 9. Mi'ila, laws of the misappropriation of consecrated property. 9. Korbanot offerings. 1. Korban Pesach, the Passover offering. 2. Chajaga, the festival offering. 3. Bekorat, laws regarding first-born children. 4. Shegagat, offerings for unintentional transgressions. 5. Mechusari Kapara, offerings for those with incomplete atonement. 6. Temura, substitution. 10. Tahara, ritual purity. 1. Tumat met, defilement by coming into contact with death. 2. Para Aduma, the red heifer. 3. 
Tumat Zara'at, defilement by Zara'at 4. Metame Mishka U Masha 5. Shi'ar Avit Hatumo 6. Tumat Ochalan, defilement of foods 7. Kelam, vessels 8. Mikvo, laws regarding the mikvah 11. Sefer Nezikim, also known as Sefer Nezikim injuries 1. Nizke Mammon, property damage 2. Geneva, theft 3. Gazela Viavita, robbery and lost property 4. Huvel Umazik, one who injures another 5. Rotzia Ushmarat Nefesh, murderers and life preservation 12. Sefer Kinyan, acquisition 1. Mekira 2. Zekia Umatana, ownerless property and gifts. 3. Shechenim, neighbors. 4. Shluhan Vishudafin, agents and partners. 5. Avadim, slaves. 13. Sefer Mishpatim, civil laws. 1. Shirat. 2. Sheila Upakadan. 3. Malva Vlava. 4. 2. NV. Nitan. 5. Nahalo 14. Sefer Shoftim Judges 1. Sanhedrin 2. Edit, Testimony 3. Mamram 4. Evil, Mourning 5. Melikim Umilhamotehem, Kings and Wars Topic. Contemporary reaction Topic. Topic. Critics and criticism Topic. The Mishnah Torah was strongly opposed almost as soon as it appeared. Major sources of contention were the absence of sources and the belief that the work appeared to be intended to supersede study of the Talmud. Some criticisms appear to have been less rational in nature. Indeed, Maimonides quotes the Talmud in stating that one should study the Talmud for a third of one's study time. The most sincere but influential opponent, whose comments are printed parallel to virtually all editions of the Mishnah Torah, was Rabbi Abraham ben David of Pasquieres, Ravid III, France, 12th century. Many critics were especially bitter against the new methods which he had employed, and the very peculiarities which he had regarded as merits in his work failed to please his opponents because they were innovations. Thus they reproached him because he wrote in Judeo-Arabic instead of in the customary Talmudic idiom, because he departed from the Talmudic order and introduced a division and arrangement of his own, and because he dared to sometimes decide according to the Tosefta and the Jerusalem Talmud as against the Babylonian Talmud. Especially sharp was the blame heaped upon Maimonides because he neglected to cite his sources. This was considered an evidence of his superciliousness, since it made it difficult, if not absolutely impossible, for scholars to verify his statements, and compelled them to follow his decisions absolutely. Yet, despite all this, Maimonides remained certain that in the future the Mishnah Torah would find great influence and acceptance. This is boldly expressed in a letter to his student Rabbi Yosef ben Ha Rav Yehuda. And all that I've described to you regarding those who won't accept it the Mishnah Torah properly, that is uniquely in my generation. However, in future generations, when jealousy and the lust for power will disappear, all of Israel will subsist lit. Quote, we be satiated on it alone, and will abandon all else besides it without a doubt, except for those who seek something to be involved with all their lives, even though it doesn't achieve a purpose. Topic. Maimonides' response Topic. Maimonides defended himself. He had not composed this work for glory, he desired only to supply the necessary, but lacking, code, for there was danger lest pupils, weary of the difficult study, might go astray in decisions of practical importance letter to Rabbi Jonathan of Lunnell, in which he thanks the latter for certain corrections, responsa of Maimonides, 49. He noted that it had never been his intention to abolish Talmudic studies altogether, nor had he ever said that there was no need of the halakot of Rabbi Isaac Alphasi, for he himself had lectured to his pupils on the Gemara and, at their request, upon Alphasi's work responsa, number 140. However, he did state that for the masses, there was no need for Talmud study, as the Mishni Torah, along with the written Torah, would suffice introduction to the Mishni Torah. He also stated that in-depth study of Talmudic discussions was 
a waste of time, for the sole purpose of study was to know how to practice the law letter to Joseph ben Judah. He said that his omission of his sources was due solely to his desire for brevity, although he regretted that he had not written a supplementary work citing his authorities for those halakot whose sources were not evident from the context. He would, however, should circumstances permit, atone for this error, however toilsome it might be to write such a supplement responsa, number 140. Ravid was forced to acknowledge that the work of Maimonides was a magnificent contribution note on Kalayim 6-2, nor did he hesitate to praise him and approve his views in many passages, citing and commenting upon the sources. Later works e. G. Yosef Karo's Kesef Mishne set out to find sources for Maimonides' decisions, and to resolve any disputes between him and the Ravid. Yonah of Girona Topic. Special mention should be made of Yonah of Girona, a cousin of Nachmanides Ramban who was initially a member of the vocal opponents of the Yad. He was involved in the burning of a number of copies of the Sefer HaMata in the 1240s. Regret followed, when he saw the Talmud being burnt in Paris in 1244, which he interpreted as a sign from heaven that he had been mistaken. He set out to the land of Israel, to ask forgiveness on the Rambam's grave in presence of ten witnesses, composing a classic work on penitence titled Sharei Teshuva, the gates of repentance, during his soul searching. Influence <inaudible> 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 Thus the work of Maimonides, notwithstanding the sharp attacks upon it, soon won general recognition as an authority of the first importance for ritual decisions. According to several authorities, Yad Malaki, Rule 26, PG 186, a decision may not be rendered in opposition to a view of Maimonides, even though the latter apparently militated against the sense of a Talmudic passage, for in such cases the presumption was that the words of the Talmud were incorrectly interpreted. Likewise. One must follow Maimonides even when the latter opposed his teachers, since he surely knew their views, and if he decided against them he must have disapproved their interpretation." Even when later authorities, like Asher ben Jehiel the Rosh, decided against Maimonides, it became a rule of the Oriental Jews to follow the latter, although the European Jews, especially the Ashkenazim, preferred the opinions of the Rosh in such cases. But the hope which Maimonides expressed, that in time to come his work and his alone would be accepted, has been only half fulfilled. His Mishnah Torah is indeed still very popular, but there has been no cessation in the study of other works. Ironically, while Maimonides refrained from citing sources out of concern for brevity or perhaps because he designed his work to be used without studying the Talmud or other sources first, the result has often been the opposite of what he intended. Various commentaries have been written which seek to supply the lacking source documentation, and, indeed, today, the Mishnah Torah is sometimes used as a sort of an index to aid in locating Talmudic passages. In cases where Maimonides' sources, or interpretation thereof, is questionable, the lack of clarity has at times led to lengthy analyses and debates, quite the opposite of the brevity he sought to attain. On the other hand, this only became an issue for students and scholars who studied the Mishnah Torah's sources. According to Maimonides himself, deducing law from the sources had already become a precarious proposition for a number of reasons even in his own times. This necessarily relates to different subjects, like the influence of the exile, language skills, lack of time, censorship, and alternate versions of the Talmud. Printed editions and textual accuracy Topic. Over time many textual errors and distortions have appeared in the various editions of Maimonides' Mishnah Torah. These inaccuracies are in the text of rulings, in the drawings made by the Rambam, as well as in the division and thus the numbering of rulings. There are various reasons for these inaccuracies. Some are due to errors in the copying of manuscripts before the age of printing or mistakes by typesetters of later editions. Others are due to conscious attempts to correct the text, and yet others to Christian censorship in countries under its control. In addition, Maimonides himself frequently edited the text of his own autograph copy, such that manuscripts copied from his own book did not preserve his later corrections. Thus, the received version may not be the text that Maimonides intended us to read. 
Often the distortions in existing versions prompted questions on the Mishni Torah which were solved in many creative and different ways by the scholars throughout the generations. Many of these questions don't arise in the first place if the version is corrected based upon reliable manuscripts. In order to determine the exact version, scholars use reliable early manuscripts, some of them containing Maimonides' own signature, which are free of both Christian censorship and the changes of later readers who tried to correct the text on their own, without manuscript evidence. Since the middle of the 20th century there have been five scientific printings of the book. Rabbi Shabsai Frankel's edition includes critical editions of the classical commentators on Mishnah Torah as well as the book itself. However, the actual text of Mishnah Torah in this edition is based heavily on the printed editions, rather than the early manuscripts, whose variant readings are relegated to marginal notes and an apparatus at the end of each volume. All the volumes have been published. Rabbi Yosef Kafi's edition is based mainly on Yemenite manuscripts, and includes an extensive commentary by Rabbi Qafih that surveys the discussions of the classical commentaries on Mishnah Torah and includes verbatim citation of previous commentaries in their entirety. The Yad Peshuda edition by Rabbi Nahum Rabinovich, Rosh Yeshivat Yeshivat Berkat Moshe in Mal Adamim. This edition is based on a number of manuscripts different ones are used for the different books, according to their reliability and includes an original commentary on the Mishnah Torah. The Exact Mishnah Torah, edition by Rabbi Yitzchak Shelet, also of Yeshivat Berkat Moshe has no commentary. It compares the printed versions to the fixed version. So far, four volumes have been printed, the publisher expects to print two new volumes each year. A one-volume edition 1,000 pages, published by Yeshivat or Vishua and now in its third edition, reflects all the editions based on reliable manuscripts, accompanied by surrounding indexes but with no commentary. The text was checked again, based mainly on Rabbi Yosef Qafih's edition. It gives variant readings from the other leading editions only in cases where the changes are meaningful. The Mishni Torah project of the yeshiva also plans to publish a multi-volume pocket edition including vowel diacritics and cross-references to other passages and to Maimonides. Other works. The pocket version of Sefer HaMada the Book of Knowledge is already in print. Topic. Codes and commentators Topic. Mishnah Torah itself has been the subject of a number of commentaries, the most notable of which being Magad Mishneh by Vidal de Toulouse, Kesef Mishneh by Yosef Karo, Mishneh La Melich, Lakem Mishneh, Rabbi David ben Zimra Radbiz, and Hagahat Maimoni which details Ashkenazi customs. Most commentators aim to resolve criticisms of the Ravid, and to trace Maimonides' sources to the text of the Talmud, Midrash and Geonim. Later Codes of Jewish Law, e. g. Arba. A Turim by Rabbi Jacob ben Asher and Shulchan Aruch by Rabbi Yosef Karo, draw heavily on Maimonides' work, and in both whole sections are often quoted verbatim. Also there were many attempts down to the present time to force those who follow the rulings of the Rambam to change to the Shulchan Aruch or some other latter work of Minhag, Halakha. In response to this Rabbi Yosef Karo wrote, who is he whose heart conspires to approach forcing congregations who practice according to the Rambam of blessed memory, to go by any one of the early or latter-day Torah authorities? Is it not a case of a fortiori, that regarding the school of Shammai, that the Halakha does not go according to them, they the Talmudic sages said, if one practices like the school of Shammai, he may do so, but, according to their leniencies and their stringencies, the Rambam, is the greatest of all the Torah authorities, and all the communities of the land of Israel and the Arab-controlled lands and the West North Africa practice according to his word, and accepted him upon themselves as their chief rabbi. Whoever practices according to him with his leniencies and his stringencies, why coerce them to budge from him? and all the more so if also their fathers and forefathers practiced accordingly, for their children are not to turn right or left from the Rambam of blessed memory. And even if communities that practice according to the Rosh or other authorities like him became the majority, they cannot coerce the minority of congregations practicing according to the Rambam of blessed memory, to practice like they do. And there is no issue here concerning the prohibition against having two courts in the same city low tithe gotadu, since every congregation should practice according to its original custom. <laughs> Present day 
Topic. Topic. Study. Topic. The in-depth study of Mishnah Torah underwent a revival in Lithuanian Judaism in the late 19th century. The Lithuanians did not use it as a source book on practical halakha, as they followed the Ashkenazi authorities such as Moses Isorals and the Aruch HaShulchan. Instead, they used it as a guide to Talmudic interpretation and methodology. Given the fact that the Mishnah Torah entirely omits these topics, this reading seems paradoxical and against the grain. Their method was to compare the Talmudic source material with Maimonides' final decision, in order to reconstruct the rules of interpretation that must have been used to get from one to the other. Prominent recent authorities who have written commentaries on the work include Rabbis Meir Simha of Devinsk or Somayach, Chaim Solovichik Chidushe Rabbi Nuhayim, Yitzchak Isaac Krasilshikov Tevuna, Isser Zalman Meltzer even Hazel, and, more recently, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson Hadron al Harambam, Elazar Shach Avi Ezri, Nahum Rabinovich Yad Peshuda, and Rabbi Yosef Kopik. See also, List of Commentaries on Mishnah Torah Today, thousands of Orthodox Jews, particularly Chabad Hasidim, participate in one of the annual study cycles of Mishnah Torah one or three chapters a day, innovated by the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, in the spring of 1984. Parallel to the three chapters a day cycle, there is a daily study of the Sefer Hamitzvah, Book of the Commandments, also authored by Maimonides. A popular commentary, Urbam Elm Rambam Laam, was produced in 1971 by Rabbi Shal Tanchim Rubinstein published by Mossad Harav Cook. This 20-volume set is widely used in daily Rambam study. Mishnah Torah is often one of the first post-Talmudic sources consulted when investigating a question of Jewish law. Likewise, many scholarly speeches e.g., the traditional rabbi speech on the Shabbat preceding Pesach and Yom Kippur often revolve around a reconciliation between two passages in Maimonides' work. Practice As for Halakha Lamasa practical application of Jewish law, although the majority of Jews keep Jewish law according to various other rabbinic codes organized around the Shulchan Aruch, an increasing number of Yemenite Jews, as well as various other individuals, are being attracted to the Mishnah Torah as their choice code of Jewish law by which to live. They may consider it a return to the original ways of their ancestors. One individual who contributed to this phenomenon was Rabbi Yiya Kafi, the founder of the Dor Dame movement in Yemen. The Mishnah Torah had always been a leading authority in the Baladi local, traditionalist Yemenite community, as a matter of local custom. Scholarly work in this vein has been continued by his grandson, Rabbi Yosef Kafi also spelled Gaffa, Kafa or Kopik. Rabbi Yosef Kafi is credited with the publication of an almost encyclopedic commentary to the entire Mishnah Torah, including his own insights, set to a text of the Mishnah Torah based upon the authoritative hand-written manuscripts preserved by the Yemenite Jewish community. The introduction to his edition of the Mishnah Torah is well known in itself as a defense for the keeping of halakha according to the Mishnah Torah. During his lifetime, Rabbi Yosef Kafi was a leading figure in the Baladi Yemenite community as a whole, as well as the Dor Dame or strict Rambamists. After Rabbi Yosef Kafi died, Rabbi Rasan Arusi has largely filled his place as the leading public representative of the Baladi and Rambamist communities. Rabbi Rasan Arusi is founder of Halakath Ahm Yisrael, and Makan Mishnath Harambam, and head of the marriage department of the Rabbinate of Israel, as well as chief rabbi of city of Kiryat Ono in Israel. Rav Arusi and the organization Makan Mishnath Harambam have published several books filled with commentary on various parts and aspects of the Mishnah Torah as well as topics related to the Yemenite Jewish community. Besides the works of Rabbi Yosef Kafi and Rabbi Rasan Arusi, there are a number of other commentaries to the Mishnah Torah written by leaders of the Yemenite Jewish community. Ethnology Scholars specializing in the study of the history and subculture of Judaism in premodern China have noted this work has surprising similarities with the liturgy of the Kaifeng Jews, descendants of Persian merchants who settled in the Middle Kingdom during the early Song dynasty. 
Beyond scriptural similarities, Michael Pollock comments the Jews' Pentateuch was divided into 53 sections according to the Persian style. He also points out, There is no proof, to be sure, that Kaifeng Jewry ever had direct access to the works of the Great Eagle, but it would have had ample time and opportunity to acquire or become acquainted with them well before its reservoir of Jewish learning began to run out. Nor do the Maimonidean leanings of the Kahila contradict the historical evidence that has the Jews arriving in Kaifeng no later than 1126, the year in which the Sung fled the city and nine years before Maimonides was born. In 1163, when the Kahila built the first of its synagogues, Maimonides was only 28 years old, so that it is highly unlikely that even his earliest authoritative teachings could by then have reached China. The compliance of their descendants with certain uniquely Maimonidean interpretations implies that the channels of communication between the Kahila and extra Chinese Jewish centers were still open several generations after its establishment. The work was being used by the Jews of India during Maimonides' lifetime. In response to a letter from the rabbis of Lunel, France requesting him to translate his Guide of the Perplexed from Arabic to Hebrew, Maimonides applauded their piety in light of what he viewed as the general stagnation of religiosity throughout the rest of the Jewish world. However, he commented, only lately some well-to-do men came forward and purchased three copies of my code the Mishnah Torah which they distributed through messengers. Thus, the horizon of these Jews was widened, and the religious life in all communities as far as India revived. Further support for the Mishnah Torah circulating in India comes in the form of a letter sent from Safed, Israel, to Italy in 1535. In it, David Del Rossi claimed that a Tripolitan Jewish merchant had told him the India town of Shingali had a large Jewish population who dabbled in yearly pepper trade with the Portuguese. As far as their religious life, he wrote they, only recognized the code of Maimonides and possessed no other authority or traditional law. Topic English translations Topic The first known English translation of the Mishnah Torah was made in 1832 by Hermann Hedwig Bernard, professor of Hebrew at Cambridge University. Bernard's work is entitled, The Main Principles of the Creed and Ethics of the Jews Exhibited in Selections from the Yad Hachizaka of Maimonides, with a literal English translation, copious illustrations from the Talmud, and c. Bernard's work includes a glossary of words and concepts which appear in the Mishnah Torah. In 1944, Philip Birnbaum published an excerpted translation published as Maimonides' Mishnah Torah, Yad Hazaka. The Yale Judaica series edition of the Mishnah Torah was started in 1949 and is almost complete, barring the Book of Knowledge, Introduction, Isadore Tversky, ISBN 0 300 02846 6, Book 2, The Book of Love, Menachem Kellner, 2004, ISBN 0 300 10348 4, Book 3, The Book of Seas. Seasons, Solomon Gans and Hyman Klein 1961, ISBN 0-300-00322-6 Book 3 Treatise 8, The Sanctification of the New Moon, Solomon Gans, Julian Oberman, Otto Neugebauer 1956, ISBN 0-300-00476-1 Book 4, The Book of Women, Isaac Klein 1972, ISBN 0-300-01438-4, ISBN 978-0-300-01438 9 Book 5, The Book of Holiness, Leon Nimoy, Louis I Rabinowitz, and Philip Grossman 1965, ISBN 0-300-00846-5 Book 6, The Book of Asseverations, B. D. Klein 1962, ISBN 0-300-00633-0 Book 7, The Book of Agriculture, Isaac Klein 1979, ISBN 0-300-02223-9 Book 8, The Book of Temple Service, Mendel Lewitz ISBN 0-300-00497-4 Book 9, The Book of Offerings, Herbert Dan, 1950 ISBN 0-300-00398-6 Book 10, The Book of Cleanness, Herbert Dan, 1954 ISBN 0-300-00397-8 Book 11, The Book of Torts, Hyman Klein 1954 ISBN 0-300-00632-2 Book 12, The Book of Acquisitions, Isaac Klein 
1951 ISBN 0 300 00631 4 Book 13, The Book of Civil Laws, Jacob J. Rabinowitz 1949 ISBN 0 300 00845 7 Book 14, The Book of Judges, Abraham M. Hirschman 1949 ISBN 0 300 00548 2 In 1981 Feldheim Publishers published an edition of the first two books based on the Oxford Manuscript, with the translation of Moses Hyamson. As the translation was made from the traditional printed texts, it does not always match the Hebrew. Mosname Publishing Corporation has published an annotated English translation of the Mishnah Torah by Rabbi Eliyahu Tugar. This edition is available online on Chabad.org in November 2006 Rabbi Mayer Alter Horowitz of the Boston Hasidic Dynasty announced that the Nesher Haggadah Legacy Foundation had begun a translation, Parish Hamir, elucidating and explaining the Mishnah Torah. See also List of commentaries on Mishnah Torah, Hebrew translations of all of Maimonides' Jewish works as opposed to, e.g., medical by Rabbi Yosef Kopik, Rambam, Shulchan Aruch. Topic. References Topic. Topic. External links Topic. Mosname Publishing, Mishnah Torah Mishnah Torah for the iPhone and iPad, full text in Hebrew, includes list of mitzvah and the corroborative glosses and the animad versions of the Ra'avad. Mishnah Torah, full text in English, Chabad.org slash library in English Daily Rambam study, audio classes and text English, Hebrew Full text, MTR version Hebrew Full text, MTR version with Hebrew, English translator Rambam's introduction English Maimonides resource page, links to translations and resources Overview of topics from www.torah Org Structure of the 14 books of Mishnah Torah An online Spanish translation of the Mishnah Torah